Welcome to Five Points Blues presentation of Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. Here are your hosts, Nikki Harrison and Christy Scales. Hello, hello. Welcome to Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. I'm Nikki Harrison here with Christy Scales. How are you doing today? I'm doing great because we have some exciting breaking news to share with Cowboy fans. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But before we get to that nugget, I want to just give us a rundown of what we're going to talk about today. We're coming off of a great win. And we're going to circle back to what we talked about last week, the color rush. Um, give us a couple details about what happened with the Redskins. Um, Sean Lee may be back in the lineup on Sunday, which mm-hmm. will be It's great. looking good. That's mm-hmm. right. Also, um, Des broke a significant record last week. So I'd like for us to talk about that and then also go into what Jason Witten is doing with his foundation. Yeah, for some exciting things tonight. I'm wearing red, not because of just beating the Redskins, but to tell you about a holiday party that the Cowboys Women's Association does with Jason and Michelle Witten for some really uh, uh, worthy families uh, and awesome. to talk about that. But yeah, we, we started, uh, we spent a lot of last week on Back to the Basics talking mm-hmm. about uniforms and we want to uh, circle back to that because you're going to see something on Sunday when the Cowboys play at MetLife Stadium at the New York Giants, a color combination of uniforms that we've never seen before. Right. And this is breaking news. This is no breaking one news. Knows That's this. right. Yeah. You, you're <laughs> getting the exclusive exclusive on Five Points Blue for joining our podcast. And we're going to have it up on the site just about right now. It's going to pop up. But uh, the Cowboys are going to be wearing their blue jerseys, mm-hmm. which they normally wear with the silver pants. Right. But they're going to be wearing it with their white pants okay. this year, the white uh, color rush it. pants. So yeah. the reason why is uh, the New York Giants have designated this coming weekend, uh, week 14, as their color rush. Now, as we talked about color rush last week, Nikki, we talked about how that was something that was introduced a couple years ago with Nike and the NFL, and it's for Thursday night football games. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the Cowboys-Giants game is this Sunday. A reminder, it got moved from 325 Central to noon Central, so it's an earlier kickoff. But... Uh, the Giants, they did have a Thursday night game, but it was the night of Thanksgiving. It was at Washington, and as we know, the and the home team gets to decide the color of uniform. That was not a designated color rush game okay. on Thanksgiving night for the uh, Redskins hosting the Giants. So the Giants uh, had an opportunity to do their color rush. They wanted it for a special occasion, so it would be hosting a rival like the Cowboys. So their color rush is all white, just like the Cowboys one is all white. Mm-hmm. Well, that necessitates the Cowboys wearing their blue, mm-hmm. since the uh, Giants will be in a white jersey and white pants. So, yeah, just to kind of change things up, and uh, uh, there are a couple of reasons why the Cowboys are going to, you know, uh, do something new and not do the tradition of the silver pants and the blue jersey. Number one, they think it's going to look cool. Yeah, I think so. I think, <laughs> I think it I will too. I wonder how people will I think like it, it. Yeah. So you, you know, know what? In fact, call in and let <laughs> us know the number for uh, back to the basics here. Five points blue is two one. 8722102 that's 2148722102 so what do you think it's going to look like the white pants with the blue uniform but um they think it's going to look cool, but also players like Des Bryant, some other veterans over the last few years have been lobbying Mike McCord, the equipment director, and uh, Cowboys merchandise. And, uh, hey, we think this would look cool. And so well, that's that's neat. that's, that's they why they're do doing it. it. Yeah, okay. yeah, the, the players uh, want to do it. So, okay. yeah, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's very exciting, just something a little different. Uh, you know, I know that uh, uh, it's going to be cool because you folks are, like, the first to know this. <laughs> and so... Uh, the people who, you, you know, your friends or family that you're watching the game with on Sunday, if they haven't been paying close attention, then I say something looks weird. And then you can explain uh, why. Mm-hmm. So the other thing with the Giants with their color rush uniform, again, it's the all white. The Giants uniform, uh, the blue helmet. Right. And it has the red stripe. It has a logo, the NY. Uh, but back in the old days, like, uh, I think it was like the 70s and stuff, it was uh, Giants spelled out in white letters and they're going to be wearing those uh they're removing the ny logo okay. from the blue helmet and putting on the logo that says giants Interesting. so it's going to be a different look yeah. for the giants on sunday mm-hmm. and it's going to be a different look for the cowboys with the blue jersey the white pant the the thing that is going to look um uh 
normal for the Giants after a one-game benching. Yes. Eli, Eli. Manning is is going to be back at at quarterback. Okay. So. All yeah, right. not you know, it's not that Geno played particularly poorly mm -hmm. uh, against the Raiders. The Giants lost again; they're two and ten. And uh, Eli Manning was benched for the one game, but now that uh, the uh, Maras, the <laughs> owner of the uh, John Mara, the owner of the Giants, uh, they went ahead and they fired uh, the head coach Ben McAdoo, and they fired general manager Jerry Reese. So Steve Spagnolo, who's the defensive coordinator of the Giants has added interim head coach to his and, title, and so I, I, I man, wow. th I think they're going to be some. You know, this may be a turning thing for the Giants players. You know, this mm -hmm. isn't going. I think a lot of fans are thinking, oh, it's going to be a walkover. The Giants have so many injured players, and they've just been so horrible this season. But hey, nothing like a little change to wow. maybe well, give them a little spark. So I, they I, can I keep losing. yeah, I don't it won't hurt my feelings. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be as easy a, on Sunday as what some people think it is. Mm, not what I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but quickly, just to stay with the color rush for just a little bit. Sure. Last week, you mentioned that the Redskins were going to be wearing all gold. Well, that that so what they're supposed to wear for their color mm -hmm. rush. They did not. They did not. So they got fined well, for wearing the burgundy. Correct. Isn't well, that burgundy? that's going to be interesting. Interesting. Yes, the uh, the Nike Color Rush. What they wore uh, against the Cowboys that Thursday night for Color Rush game. Uh, it was supposed to be their their all gold, mm -hmm. but they don't like it. Garish, I, I believe, is the word. And, in and fact, I don't think it would have looked good up against oh, out the Cowboys all white. That just wouldn't. It look wouldn't good look at good all. to Stevie Wonder. I mean, <laughs> it's. I'm sorry. It's just horrible. It is horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> so. <sighs> Uh, what, what happened? Yeah. I, can I tell a funny story about this, though? Um, so at this time last week, when okay. we were talking about the Color Rush game coming up, and I mentioned that Jay Gruden, the Redskins head coach, mm -hmm. had in a press conference earlier that day said, we don't know what we're going to wear. Mm -hmm. All right. Players, they, they didn't want to wear the all gold. By wearing the all burgundy, it, this goes back to what we talked about last week, having the uniform police on the sideline. Right, And yes. I told you about how former Cowboy wide receiver Tony yeah. Hill yeah. Uh, is that on the Cowboys sideline. Well, it happened to be Barry Foster, who was a running back, really good player for the Steelers. And he was working as the uniform policeman on the visiting sideline. Uh, for the at AT&T Stadium for the game last Thursday and <laughs> as the game is starting you know there are 46 active players out He's of 53 checking and there off. there are 46 <laughs> players on his list because they were not wearing correct. the correct color they weren't wearing their color rush they were wearing a burgundy uh road their I'm sorry their burgundy road pants with their burgundy home jersey they usually wear mm -hmm. the dark colors at home uh with the white pants so Wow. Yeah. Now, whether they're going to get fined, I can't imagine that that uh, the players would all have to pay them. I'm, I'm really interested to see how okay. the league handles this because, yeah. you know, Nike's not happy. Correct. Of course. I wouldn't be happy either. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but moving on, we actually have a question, which is perfect for this week. OK. Tina from Monroe, Louisiana. OK. She wants to know um, about Sean Lee and the mic. It's, it's sort of kind of about Sean Lee, but the Mike, when, when quarterbacks say Mike and oh, they're yes. calling out Mike you're, all you're, the time. Sure, you're talking <laughs> about Mike, Will, and Sam, who actually for us are Anthony, Sean, and Damian. Mike, Will, Mike, Will and, and Sam. Sam. Mike, Will, and Sam means that Mike is the middle linebacker. Uh -huh. Sam is the strong side linebacker. And Will is the weak side linebacker. So this football stuff these guys come up with, it's not hard. Just what's the first letter? M for Mike for middle. Uh, Sam, wow. S for strong side. And D Will, W, weak, weak for side. weak side. But that does beg the question, what is a strong side and what mm -hmm. is a weak side? And so that has to do with the defense and how they match up with the offense. So let's pull out our... Yay. Our explain a thing. The explain a thing because we spare no expense at Five Points Blue, <laughs> but we'll give you the Sam, the Will, and the Mike. But first, we have to draw the offensive line. So okay. you have your center with the ball. There are five offensive linemen. Your center, you have a guard and a tackle on each side. There's our left guard. 
and our left tackle. So it's even right now, right? You have right. two on the right side, two on the left side. Got it. Whichever side that the tight end lines up on okay. is going to be the strong side. So let's say that for the Cowboys that we have uh, two running backs and then we have Jason Witten in um, – the game. So if Jason Witten t- uh, lines up here on the left side, mm-hmm. then obviously we have more on the left side than we have the right side. We have one extra guy. So this is the strong side. And this is the weak side. Okay. The middle linebacker, Mike is going to be in the middle. The uh, Sam, the strong side linebacker, Sam's going to line up on the strong side. And then Will, the weak side linebacker, will line up on the weak side. And you've seen it where guys uh, go in motion. You know, sometimes Jason Witten will move over to the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If he goes in motion, or even if it's the next play, and if he, if uh, the tight end lines up over on this side, well, guess what? Now this is the strong side. Mm-hmm. So Sam. Runs over there. So you're going to see. That's why Sean Lee. Yes. Who is weak side linebacker for the Cowboys. Okay. And then Damian Wilson is our starting strong side linebacker. You'll see them flip sides because what they're doing is they're lining up. Their response, it's a chess match, right? So if the offense moves their chess piece, then we move our chess piece. We respond for the matchups. You often hear uh, strong safety and free safety. And Cowboy, I'm generalizing here because, but uh, you you have a strong safety and a free safety, and that's kind of the more older traditional things. The way they do things now is not quite so, um, but your strong safety would be on the strong side, and then your free safety on the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So Mike, Sam, and Will. Mike, Sam, and Will. Those are just the three different uh, linebacker positions. And so what's the word on Sean Lee? Is it is it confirmed? Yeah, it's or? looking great. Sean has missed the last three games with a hamstring injury. But uh, the plan is that he will uh, practice tomorrow, Wednesday, Perfect. which Good. is a big – Wednesday and Thursday are the biggest days of practice. And usually Wednesday – and I'm kind of simplifying things, but it's more run game installation – Thursday, generally more uh, pass game installation. But if, if you're able to, to go through uh, full practice or even limited, then that's that's good. It means that he's uh, working back in. And he said all along that he, he thought – he was hopeful that he could do the uh, game against the Redskins. But remember, okay. that was a short week. It right. was a Thursday right. game. And you, could he have done it if the game was played on Sunday instead of Thursday? Maybe, but that three-game stretch in 12 days, in my That's opinion, was overly optimistic. Mm-hmm. That's so, a lot. Yeah. Okay, so then jump into the other side of the ball, back to the quarterback. He's yelling out Mike. When they also yell out, hut, hut. Oh, That's a, yeah. I know it's a simple question, but why do they do that? Oh, that's that's actually a great question. When the quarterback, you know, when he does the cadence, hut hut, and then he says hike. Yes. Hut, yeah. What does it mean to hike what the ball? What does it mean? Actually, it's funny. Uh, you've heard of the Heisman Trophy, yes, right? For yes. the best player, Baker Mayfield's probably going to win it. The OU quarterback this year, top player in college football, wins the Heisman Trophy. Well, it's named after a guy named John Heisman, right? Who was a player and a coach, and he was uh, he played center for Penn back in the 1890s and back then they did football was very it was a lot different then than what it is now and in fact early f- football like in the 1860s it looked more like a rugby scrum than what we see with the line of scrimmage and <laughs> but anyway um they didn't re- the quarterback really didn't use a cadence or words he would just tap them okay okay so John Heisman was waiting for the tap from the quarterback to start the play well, I think he got tapped one time by a defender whatever he didn't snap the ball at the the right time and so they went to using words okay. and so hike uh, it's just like you hike up your sleeve or you hike up your pant leg mm-hmm. it's to lift right yeah so he's hiking up the ball so hike yes yeah Yes. That's what it is. He's hiking up the ball. Got it. Just like you hike your sleeve. See? And then the hut hut, hut, hut. Yeah. that's all part of the cadence. And so that's really more of a military thing. So uh, there's a cadence to marching. Mm-hmm. And there's also, you know, attend, attention, attend, hut. Yes. And then when you're marching, hut, do the yes. uh, hut. So what the quarterback is doing at the line of scrimmage before the ball is hiked is he's going through a cadence. 
And the other thing, uh, it's great what we have now with television and radio where we hear so much of that communication. Yes. And so I think that your the question earlier from uh, Louisiana, Tina, Tina mm-hmm. where she was talking about like with the mic and everything, mm-hmm. you'll hear the quarterback, 59's the mic, 59's the mic, or maybe the next, you know, 52's the mic, 52's yes. the mic. Well, Pointing out the middle linebacker, and to be honest, it doesn't always have to be the middle linebacker, but there's going to be a player, usually a linebacker in the middle, that they're going to set their – the quarterback is communicating with the offensive line, and if the back is helping block for him, they're setting their blocking off of one guy. You know, so they got a key – off of it so sometimes you've seen it where defenders they're like moving around and stuff mm-hmm. uh, or they, they kind of give a different look and so the uh, quarterback is simply pointing out 59's the mic or 53's the mic just so that everyone is coordinated and knows what the blocking is based yes. off of does wow. that make sense absolutely it does yeah so, so <laughs> it's all this communication oh and then I should probably – actually, I had a question on that last week on Twitter. Okay. Um, I think it was Ritzy. Let me find it here. Yeah, Ritzy at, in Wiley, Texas, asked mm-hmm. about uh, Omaha. Because remember how yeah. uh, Peyton Manning was Always famous for Omaha? Omaha? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's a – most of the time now, sometimes they'll change things up because people get used to hearing things. But mm-hmm. Omaha was a snap indicator. Okay. So he said Omaha, and that meant like the next word that he would say is when the ball would be hiked. Okay. That makes sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So. Wow. Yeah, you, okay. you, you have to change things up. And so uh, when you have a, a snap, you have your cadence mm-hmm. and your snap count. So in the huddle. The play call, the one that we gave uh, a few mm-hmm. episodes ago. Don't ask ago. me to repeat it. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> Something scat flat gun, 48. Gun, <laughs> gun train right. Gun train right scat right F 39 F flat on two set hut. I set or break set break. So okay. so it's I had be on, scat, scat in flat. Scat, uh, gun so shotgun train right three wide receivers to the right uh-huh. scat right. That's your blocking right. and your protection. Um, uh, 539 was your three receivers who are lined up to the right. Those are the, they're running the five, the three, and the nine. And then an F flat tells the fullback to go out in the flat. Uh, on two. Let me stop you Ready, right great. quick. Mm-hmm. About how many of those do they have? Oh, gosh, there are dozens. I mean, the playbooks that, they, you know That's what? That's a lot. They do still have remember. a book, but really, it's, uh, it, they, they do the stuff on the tablets broke, yeah. now. So, <laughs> the way that these guys learn it now, it's all on their tablets. But there are That's hundreds of plays. Oh, but you goodness. might have, a, in an average game, you run about 65 plays. Wow. 63 to 65 on off, 63 yeah. maybe on offense, 63, 65 on defense. Goodness. goodness. Uh, but anyway, you, you have, dozens and dozens now you might have a couple hundred plays but not all of them are going to be in for every game for sure you know yeah and you're going to work on certain ones during the week okay that you think are going to be most effective against that defense got it right got that makes sense anyway so so you have your your snap count so gun train right scat right 539 (laughs) f flat on two so on two so you come up to the line of scrimmage blue 88 Blue, 88, set, hut, hut. Well, it's on the second hut, on two, right? Well, right. guys, get used to it. You're going you're gonna to change your snap count, okay? Mm-hmm. So this time it's going to be the play on three. So it's going to be hut, hut, hut on the ah, third one. Uh-huh. Well, then you can have a hard count because you the defense, they're getting used to that, right? Right. You want to try and draw them off sides. Right. So you'll do a hard count. And uh, Douglas, we might want to ride the mic here. I'll try and do it off mic. That's it. <laughs> hut, it. hut, 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 right? So yeah. you're trying to you're trying to draw them off. Good right? job, Douglas. But, Thank but you. yeah, <laughs> but you have to be you know your wow. your players on offense have to be disciplined. Yes, right. They got to be ready. And when you send in attention. a new quarterback, it's mm-hmm. one of the real issues that you have is is the uh, everyone you know the cadence can be yeah, just a timing. little bit different, and so sometimes sure. you'll see some offensive linemen or players you know move 
differently because mm-hmm. you, you you get used to it. You get in a rhythm. You get used to the sounds. And, total but sense. the defensive players do too. And so they pick up on, like I'm saying, Omaha is a snap indicator, and it usually it means like whatever the next word is, they're going to snap it. Well, the defense can figure that out too. Yeah. yeah. So you know you're you're going to change things. The other thing is you have different colors, right? You'll have different colors or different numbers. Ah. It, Tom Brady, you'll hear this all the time on a, a thing, you know. You'll hear we talked about Mike, Sam, yes. and Will. Uh-huh. On uh the Patriots, you can hear him say, Rita, Rita. Well that me R Rita, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Right. right side. Lisa, Lisa. Left side. Left. Wow. Or you know, Blue eighty eight. Yeah. Blue eighty nine. Uh, whether it's a, you know, you might be switching from right to left on a run play, for example, depending on if it's an even number or an odd number. Okay. And then you'll have different alerts. So like maybe the hot color is uh, green. Okay. So green 88, green 88. When you hear green, something's up, you know, pay attention. Wow. Does, that, does that make sense? It does make sense. It's all these boys with their little secret decoder rings. And Definitely. Their forts, and you just have to figure out, you know, their little decoding things to figure out what they're going to do. Wow. I stole that line from Denise Bates, Bill and Denise <laughs> Bates. Remember Bill Bates, number 40? His wife, Denise. Uh-huh. Uh, she and Bill uh, used to do the Cowboys 101 for women, and they were just yeah. hilarious. It was so much fun. Babe Laufenberg and I took it over after uh, uh, Bill uh, and, his, and Denise and the kids moved to uh, Florida. But uh, I always love that line. It's just little boys in their forts with their secret (laughs) decoder rings. By the way, remember when the triplets were born in the early 80s? -hmm. They're now all out of college, and Bill and Denise are now grandparents. Grandparents. Yeah. That's beautiful. So I'm at the Hall of Fame. Well, let's talk about Dez, because he broke a significant record last week. Yeah, with uh, Bob Hayes. Bob Hayes, Hayes. yeah. he had been He had been tied with Bob Hayes with uh, 71 touchdown catches. Okay. Which was tied for... They were tied for the most in Cowboys history, and now Dez has 72, so he's alone at the top. But uh, oh. Bob, Bob Hayes, bullet Bob Hayes, I think a lot of fans realize that he's in the Hall of Fame and he's in the Cowboy Ring of Honor, but what a special athlete. Uh, he was nicknamed Bullet because he was known as the fastest human on the planet, and that's because in the 1964 Tokyo Olympics, he won the 100-meter yes. sprint, and then he was also he won the gold as the anchor leg on the 4x100. So wow. he really was the fastest right, man right. on earth. But instead of a track guy who later converted to football, he was, he was a good football player too, mm-hmm. right? He played at uh, Florida A&M, both football and track. And when the Cowboys drafted him in 1964, it was on a futures contract. So he still had some eligibility left, you know, but hey, if he, when he finishes this track thing, hopefully he'll come play football. And if he does, then we have his rights. Well, that's how it worked out. He, he joined the Cowboys in 1965 and just prolific career. Wow. He averaged over 20 yards a catch okay. for wow. his career. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, Nikki, this is really cool. He changed the way defenses play football. Mm, okay. He was so fast yeah. that literally no cornerback could keep up with him. He's the fastest man on the planet, <laughs> literally. Yes. And so uh, instead of man, you know, you couldn't mm-hmm. play man. The They started playing zone defenses. Okay. All because so a man. zone is when someone comes into your territory, you cover him. Right. And uh, it's just like, uh, you know, it'd be hard to cover Michael Jordan one-on-one on there, you know? For I mean, sure. It, wouldn't for it have sure. been great if they could have played a zone against Michael Jordan? Anyway. Um, That's fantastic for yeah. guys to have broken that record. Oh, yeah. That's because, fantastic. Because, uh, Bob, it, it, the other, they have so much in common. Uh, Dez doesn't do it anymore, but uh, they are both prolific punt returners. Mm-hmm. I think that Dez has two punt return touchdowns in his career. Bob had three. Wow. Wow. But at different styles of game. Bob was speed, and Dez is more physical. Right. Dez is not a blazer. You know, he's not gonna he's he's not gonna run down the field past people like Joey Galloway used to be able to. Okay. Right? right. He's a physical guy. For sure. And Great it takes in the red a zone. People to get him down. Absolutely. And he can go up and out muscle and out physical mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. the defensive backs. That's the strength of Dez's game. Right. So so two different kind of styles of receiver. But and, and that doesn't mean that Bob Hayes was not tough and he couldn't go up and get the ball. Obviously, he could. Yeah. But just uh, yeah, you know, it was great seeing Des 
get that catch last week. And I'm so glad it crazy yes. high. <laughs> and I'm so glad it was at home. And mm-hmm. and it was vintage Des. Yes, right? it was. In, in the it end was. zone, out muscling the yes. guy. Uh, Almost I an thought impossible it, catch. Yeah, t- typical Des. Loved yeah. it. Loved it. Hey, but before we run out of time, yes. can we mention one thing? Yes, There's we someone can. we want to congratulate. Congratulations, Dat Wynn, former Dallas Cowboys linebacker. Yes. <laughs> Woohoo! Dat, uh, is, we tape this on Tuesday mm-hmm. afternoon in a couple of hours. Dat in New York City, is, uh, class of 2017. College Football Hall awesome. of Fame, and uh, a couple of guys, what, a guy named Peyton Manning and a guy named Marshall Falk and a guy named Steve Spurrier and some other, Bob uh, Crable from Notre Dame. Anyway, uh, Dad Great. is uh, it's a really awesome class being inducted, and I'm an Aggie, and Dad is my all-time favorite Aggie player. Is he really? Oh, he's a tackling machine. Started every game, and... Um, Gosh, averaged over 10 tackles per per game. He was just a tackling machine. But it's the same thing as when he came here to the Cowboys in the third round uh, in 1999. Uh, Dat was not a big guy. They list him at 5'11". Yeah, right, maybe with his (laughs) cleats on. But Larry Lacewell, who was was the the head of – the scouting department at the Mm -hmm. time was asked, oh, yeah, because the guy's too short, obviously, to play. You know, he's like – Hey, we didn't draft him to come in here and change light bulbs, you know? He ja- drafted him because he's a tackling machine, yeah. and, and he was for the Cowboys. He played seven years and had over 500 tackles, awesome. and at the time of his retirement uh, was the 10th leading tackler in Cowboys history. And then, of course, he coached a few years for the Cowboys and down at Texas right. A&M, and right. he's back in uh, Dallas now. Uh, five five kids now. Five kids. He and Becky. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Way to go, Dad. I and, like it. And if you're in Fort Worth and hungry for Chick-fil-A and Montgomery Plaza, stop in and ask if the owner's in because you might see a college football <laughs> Hall of Famer. He's uh, expanded his restaurant business and has moved back up to North Texas. So That's congratulations, great. Dad. Congratulations. We're really happy for you. Well, thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Tuesday. Thank you, Douglas, for pushing the buttons. We'll see you next week. This has been a production of Five Points Blue, DallasCowboys.com, and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?